This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Second Mighty Diamonds member passes within days. Just days after the shocking murder of Mighty Diamonds lead singer Donald Tabby Diamond Shaw, the reggae group has been plunged into mourning yet again with the untimely passing of a bandmate Fitzroy Bonnie Diamond Simpson. Simpson passed away Friday morning after a long battle with diabetes. In 2015, Simpson's wife Sylvia revealed that he had suffered a minor stroke on October 26 while driving in Kingston. I can't deal with this, it's tough. The second one of the Mighty Diamonds to pass away in four days, Frankie Campbell, chairman of the Jamaica Association of Vintage Artists and Affiliates, confirmed it to the news. Tabby Diamond was one of two shot dead in a drive-by gun attack on McKinley Crescent in Kingston. Shaw was the group's lead vocalist with Fitzroy Bonnie Simpson and Lloyd Judge Ferguson providing harmony vocals. The Diamond was added to the names of the members of the group over the years. The Mighty Diamonds is a Jamaican harmony trio with a strong Rastafarian influence. The group was formed in 1969 and remained together until 2012. They are best known for their debut album, Right Time. Tabby, Bunny, and the Judge have released over 40 albums in their long career. Their smooth harmonies and choreographed stage show were inspired by Motown vocal groups of the 1960s, The Temptations, The Impressions, as well as the Jamaican rocksteady artists John Holt and Ken Booth. The group was bestowed the Order of Distinction in the Officer Class in 2021 on Jamaica's 59th anniversary of independence. Man Dies in Freak Accident A man died in a freak accident on the Mosquito Cove Main Road in Hanover on Friday after a truck on which he was traveling overturned and landed on top of him. Details are not available at this time. Eyewitnesses told the news that another vehicle was transporting a generator when it broke free and ran across the road. The driver of the truck swung to the side of the road to avoid a collision. However, he lost the control of the truck and it landed in a ditch. The sideman, who was traveling in the cabin of the truck, reportedly jumped from the vehicle, which later overturned, crushing him to death. Transport Authority grants a licensee's 10-day grace period from prosecution. The Transport Authority has announced that it is granting all licensees with authentic Transport Authority license application receipts a short grace period from prosecution until Monday, April 11, 2022. The Transport Authority says the two-week window should provide both public passenger vehicle operators and commercial carriers additional time to collect their road license and operate in compliance with the Road Traffic and the Transport Act. According to a release, the authority is also granting a five-day waiver of the late fee for potential applicants who had made payment at any of the authorized payment facilities up to March 31, 2022. Authorized payment facilities include Bill Express, Paymaster, and the National Commercial Bank. Concerned individuals are required to submit their road license application or commercial carrier's applications no later than Thursday, April 7, 2022, in order to benefit from the waiver. In the meantime, holders of temporary badges who are yet to receive training scores or complete the training program will be granted another three months on these badges. During this period, it is anticipated that the Transport Authority will roll out the new PPV training application. Education Ministry to Assess the Living Conditions of children with behavioral challenges. A plan has been outlined for the Education Ministry to collaborate with the National Security Ministry to target 97,000 vulnerable families to assess the living conditions of children who exhibit behavioral challenges. Education Minister Favel Williams says specific programs will be designed to provide assistance to parents. In terms of psychosocial support and also working with other ministries, if there is a need for more than that, we are trying to bring it into the homes as well. It starts at the home. To the extent that your child is prepared for school, it's the parents who help in that preparatory work for the students. 
We want parents to help the children to ensure that they are in a better mental state when they show up for school, she said. News of the initiative comes amid concern about the high level of student-on-student -student violence since the resumption of face-to-face -face classes on March 7. The Education Minister recently said discussions will be held with the Jamaica Constabulary Force to have more police monitor institutions as part of the Safe Schools program. St. Elizabeth Police place cap on entertainment permits issued daily. The St. Elizabeth Police have placed a cap on the number of entertainment permits issued daily in the parish. Superintendent Dwight Daly, head of the St. Elizabeth Police, said three permits will be issued daily for entertainment events in Junction, Santa Cruz and Black River, which have larger police stations. Two permits will be granted in areas with smaller police stations. Superintendent Daly said there are some communities where no entertainment events will be allowed because of security threats. He disclosed that the police will carry out a security assessment of these communities monthly. Life sentence for man who killed the eight-year-old stepson. Ochester Rose has been sentenced to life imprisonment for killing his eight-year-old stepson in 2020 after the child's mother ended their relationship. Rose, who is 42 years old, is to serve 27 years and 10 months before he is eligible for parole. Justice Anne-Marie Lawrence Granger handed down the sentence in the Home Circuit Court minutes after 5 o'clock on Friday afternoon. Rose's stepson, Galen Buchanan, went missing on January 21, 2020. His body with hands bound was found two days later in Kingston Harbor by residents of Royal Palm Bournemouth Gardens. Rose was arrested in Trelawney four days later. Mom of two toddlers who died in fire gets a bail charged with negligence. The mother of two toddlers who perished in a fire in Hazelfield race course on March 24 was on Friday granted bail in the sum of $800,000 when she appeared in a Lionel Town courthouse to answer charges in relation to their death. Maisie Walters, who was taken into custody on Tuesday, is to return to court on June 3. Her attorney, Nicoy Ferguson, has expressed her confidence in his client's innocence. She was brought before the courts under the Child Care and Protection Act under Section 9, which in summary states that the Crown is alleging that she, being an adult that had care of a child, neglected the child, and as a result that caused harm to both the children in this instance, he told the news. When the matter was called up and the allegations were outlined, I made an application for bail and it was successful. I will be very limited with my comments because I know this is a matter that has been in the public eye and with a good reason. Because when the matters are before the court, you say as little as possible. We are confident that Miss Walters is not guilty of the offenses charged. I hasten to say, however, that really this was a very tragic situation and we don't want to minimize it. I will be representing Miss Walters, and at the appropriate time, the court will hand out an appropriate ruling. Four-year-old Abigail and her three-year-old sister Kayla Tomlinson burned to death while home alone. Shortly after the fire, their grandfather, Colin Walters, said his daughter had left to take lunch the girl's father, who was working at a nearby construction site. Four in custody over firearm and ammo seizure in St. James. Four people, including a woman, are now in police custody after a team of officers assigned to the St. James Police Division seized one Ruger P90 with a magazine containing 4.45 rounds of ammunition during an operation on Marl Road, Montpelier, St. James, on Thursday, March 31. It is reported that lawmen were in the area about 8 p.m when they saw a group of men standing in a yard. On approach of the police team, one of the men looked in their direction, then ran into a house on the premises. He was accosted by the lawmen, and a search of the premises was conducted, where the illegal firearm and ammunition was recovered. The identities of the four people arrested are being withheld, pending further investigation. Needs a card production and a vetting center almost complete. Dr. Warren Vernon, Program Director of the National Identification System Project, has reported that the NIDSA card production and the vetting center is now 95% completed. 
The update came during Thursday's first meeting of the NIDS Implementation Task Force, which is comprised of private and public sector leaders. Floyd Green, Minister without Portfolio in the Office of the Prime Minister and the Chairman of the Task Force, reiterated the need for the public's confidence in the security of the cards as they possess high-level encryption features with governance and oversight to deter misuse. He has tasked members of the task force with driving the adoption of the National Identification Card. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.